the battle for River Eisen has begun. Hey, how's it going? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome back to some more Rise of Mordor Total War action on this beautiful custom map, which goes ahead and adds in a really interesting concept into the mob. Basically, this river crossing battle with several troops being deployed across the river at the River Eisen. Um, and I'm really looking forward to this. We have a good versus evil matchup. We have the Dwarfs of Erebor with some new, new cool custom units against the Easterlings and obviously Gondor are going to be arriving but they're going to be turning up a little bit later than what you might think they're kind of like a reinforcement army the dwarves are going to get stuck in and then five minutes after that the men of gondor will turn up and hopefully try and clean up the battle we also have made this battle very even by giving the other side uh, just as many men and as much money as us so hopefully that'll be very very exciting so as i said we are using a sub mod which adds in some new units the dwarves have crossbowmen and they also have these vault wardens which are basically pikemen uh, looking very very nice and you can see the crossbowmen back here as well I also believe the Easterlings and Harad also have units. We are watching, or we are coming up against the Easterlings right now. So you can see this is a new unit, the Vargai Shield Bearers. Uh, and there's a couple more. So it's a really nice sub mod. I believe it's also getting updated as we speak in this video. So the next video I'll probably do with this sub mod will have a whole range of new units in. And it's a really nice thing because it's kind of like adding in and filling out the rosters which Rise of Mordor haven't quite got to yet. Giving you just kind of more units to play with in multiplayer which is, is always nice. So as I said, you know, we are, you can see the unit right here actually quickly. But the Swan Vanguard, these guys are dope. Basically just dismounted Swan Knights. And I mean, look at that, they look badass, especially that shield as well, looks great. So let's quickly just go ahead and run through what I'm bringing. So over on the main kind of assault force, we have a line of Grim Hammers. They're going to be supported by my Spear Guard, then the Vault Wardens. Then we do have the Crossbowmen. The Gondorian Force, which is, as I said, is, which is turning up five minutes later. We have some Swan Knights on the front line. They're going to be supported by some Swan Vanguard, the Axemen, along with Fountain Guard. We have some Rangers or some Dunedain Rangers or Affiliate Rangers. Uh, along with more of the Imperial standardized Gondorian archers. They also have a small force as well situated across the river. Uh, if we can find them, they are, I was on top of them, yeah, right here. And I think it looks so cool in the forest right now. Like, it's really nice lighting here. Very, very eerie, and they're ready to pounce once the main assault force does go down. And then finally, looking at a few of the Eastling forces, we've already looked at the new additional spear unit. They do have some archers as well, which is new to this sub mod. And then the rest of our army is going to be waiting up here on this hill, ready to receive the fight. So let's, without further ado, just go ahead and tell these guys to, to go, 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 as this is a live battle. I'll say go, 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 so everyone knows that we are ready to go. And the reinforcement timer can also begin so that, you know, Gondor can come and help me out. Because my army isn't, the, you know, the strongest in the world. We have split our funds between me and Gondor. So the Easterlings actually do have just as much money as, as we do. And just as many units because they have large armies. If not more men, probably. Yeah, they do have almost a thousand, no, about five, six hundred more men. Probably seven hundred more men than us. But I'm sure the power of the dwarves will be able to take this down. And I love the look of the map as well. This is the, the four Devizen. And it's just a really nice looking map. Like, I love the way that he's created this great ford. The trees really fit in. And this does feel like somewhere, you know, in you know, in and around uh, Isengard and Rohan. Like, this fits right now. And I could definitely see this being more of a Lord of the Rings map. So I definitely dig that. I should probably tell my pike, my vault, vault wardens not to be on uh, pike formation. So as I said, like, we unfortunately can't do the battle replays on these maps because they, they're very temperamental on a tiller and sometimes they just end up crashing. So I didn't want to really just play this and then not have, being able to show you guys just how awesome this looks. So we'll send up the mighty, mighty dwarves. And hopefully get ourselves stuck in. So we do have to break across their, their formation first. Hitting back these shield bearers. There are some pretty heavily armoured men of, East, of the Easterlings. If we can break this battle line though. We'll be able to take this position. That will really help out. It does look like the Easterlings are committing a few more swordsmen up. To help out in this assault though. Which is smart, a smart move by them. So we have, we have kind of set up a bit of a scenario here as well. So the majority of the Eastling army is going to be holding back. We're just going to be kind of taking on the other half. And look at how cool that looks in the distance. We just see the men of Gondor. I cannot wait for them to be uh, ready to move. Now let's go ahead and speed things up a little bit. Let's try and make our, our presence known on the battlefield. Obviously dwarfs aren't exactly great long distance runners. 
very dangerous over a short distance, as Gimli would say. Let's hope that is the case. Their marches are going to hurt as well on the Grim Hammers because the Grim Hammers don't exactly have any good shield armor. I could definitely spend up the Spearman first, but I want that really big shock value of my soldiers just to charge forward. And um, we're going to be in the river as well, which is going to hurt us out even more. And these arrow, this arrow fire is going to be brutal from these Easterling soldiers. You can see their men are already starting to move up, so I think we need to make our approach known straight away. Let's send up forces and just try and break this battle line as quickly as possible. All of the Grim Hammers can go up and try and get some stuff done. The rest of the soldiers can just sit there. We'll send up the spearmen as well. And we'll probably situate up the crossbowmen as well. Because the crossbowmen can obviously go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a few of their missiles as well. Obviously the range not being the best in the world, but that should be fine. So here we go. Oh, this is going to be brutal as the arrow fire does come in. Yeah, you can see the blood as the arrows do penetrate the dwarven armor. Losing a few soldiers. And obviously this river crossing as well is just slowing us up so much. Wow. We're losing men here, but as soon as we get into combat, I think it will be a different tale. But, you know, that's where our Dwarven forces will really start to benefit. Especially if we can get these crossbows into range of theirs. I kind of almost don't want to commit this already. Gondor is now moving as well. Look at this. How beautiful that looks. The Gondorian army is now on its way. Now, it might be much needed. Now, as I said, you know, now that we are engaged here, I think we'll be able to cut through this armor very, very nicely. We're sending up some crossbowmen as well. I might send up a, unit, a couple more units of spearmen as well, just to help out here. Yeah, I might send up two units of spearmen just to kind of push and just make sure that we're not being depleted too heavily. The archer fire has been horrific up here, but we'll send up our crossbowmen. Hopefully, we can start taking these guys down. They are very, very lightly armored. So our crossbows, even though we are kind of clumped up, yeah, we'll kill these guys quickly. We'll go ahead and pop our barrage and precision shot. So we should just fire down and annihilate these guys. Barrage plus our other bonuses. We should kill these guys in no time. The, the speed at which we are shooting. And it, you know, even if we end up do losing quite a few of our crossbows, then that's fine because we can then use that to uh, continue to push up. Nice. We are killing these guys. That's perfect from our crossbows. Exactly what we need to. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and throw up our spearmen now. So it's looking good for us so far. We're breaking their ranks. But we're also biding time for the, the Gondorian army to turn up. Yeah, we, we should honestly be smashing them here because the majority of their army is back across the river crossing waiting for us to, to approach. So that's kind of where the real fighting is going to begin. And this is all about minimizing our casualties. Oh no, the swordsmen have broken me there. Luckily, we are bringing up more soldiers. And let's see if we can just get a volley of crossbow shots off from these guys. Crossbow volley into these uh, dragon skins will kill them very, very quickly. Crossbows continue to shoot. Yeah, we honestly need to pry, try and break this as soon as possible. Gondor is still marching up. Starting to triple speed it up a little bit, you know, making their men, pushing their men a little bit more. But we, we still have a decent amount of soldiers. Spearmen ready to go up as well and try and break through. We'll go ahead and, and commit them up. Try and take out maybe a different unit as well of our crossbows. You guys can go ahead and try and take out their archers here. These archers are like our biggest issue. Just mainly because the Grim Hammers don't really have many much missile defense whatsoever. Oh, you definitely try and take out the Dragon Fire unit. Because this unit right here, you know, obviously you can see is a lot more heavily armored. With their more composite bows. To send up the rest of our crossbowmen. No, we never really expected our infantry to do too much crazy stuff. As long as our pikemen are still alive. And then Gondor can come in and, and really fill out the, uh, the gaps, you know. Our hammers are doing a great job. Crossbows are pushed up nicely. You guys can form like a defensive death studio here as well. Maybe you are actually protecting them with a crossbowman as well. As the arrow fire does come in, you'll be giving some protection right there. Crossbow bolts, I think we'll make nice. We're breaking this formation as well. That's perfect. We're going more into the, the actual close up fighting. It's awesome to see just how many people are now jumping on Rise of Mordor. I think releasing it was one of the best decisions they could have ever made because now they're getting so much help from the community. There's a lot of hype around it. Loads of people are now jumping on and playing matches. 
Um, and you know, the more and they've, they've opened up to the, the community as well as sending assets, and that's definitely helping. Like you're seeing right now, you know, people are taking assets and kind of doing a Warhammer 2 and, and creating you know units from the assets which the modders have made. So it's just really good to see everyone coming together and, and really working on this mod because it's so much fun. How oh, can you please shoot them? What is up with you guys? There we go. Nice. Crossbow bolts loaded. Oh, that one volley did a lot of damage. We can pop off these as well. Oh, we have a fresh unit over here. Oh, yeah, I forgot about these guys. I'm going to wait until Gondor has arrived. Oh, nice. They are just turning up now. That's going to be perfect in this battle. I'm hoping we'll just about break through. Oh, what the hell is this unit? Oh, baby. This is such a cool-ass unit. These Axemen are dope as hell. They've got bows on their back as well. Oh, they look amazing. They're going to be charging into a front line. So again, this is an additional unit. Oh, they are cutting my dwarfs to pieces. This is an additional unit right now. Uh, again, which is part of the sub mod. Yeah, the Vanguard Warriors. Oh, wow. A unit not to be messed with, apparently. Yeah, Gondor should be up here now. They're, oh, nice. They're Dunedain as well. Can reach from here. The Dunedain obviously providing such a uh, powerful unit. Come on, boys. Unleash a volley, please. This is like the YouTuber curse. I say it most times. Like, whenever you want an arrow archer fire to shoot, they just never do. And you just never end up catching it. But there you go. You can see there. See, exactly. That's what I'm saying. We had a nice little close up. They shoot. And then when I zoom out, they don't. So they're going to be coming in. Oh, look at that damage as well. The river of Aizen will run red with the blood of men today. Definitely not dwarfs. And you can see the rest of the big army right here. Lots of cavalry. Oh, that's a lot of Eastling cavalry right now. Again, this is a unit from the sub mod. Looking very, very cool indeed. Nice. Rest of the army is like formed up, just ready for battle. That's a really nice position right there. I love how they've designed that. I'm hoping that we'll get some of the Gondorians to push across. I'll tell Gondor to take the lead. Gondor, take the lead. The dwarves have fought hard, and it's up to it's now up to Gondor to push forward and, and break through with her infantry. Also, if we can kill this unit of archers with our crossbows, I'm hoping that'll be the majority of the crossbow or majority of their ammunition done. There's a still a few more archers left, but nothing too crazy. And I want to see how the maxmen are doing as well. The maxmen were a crazy ass unit. That the Eastlings are in like a defensive formation where the axemen are like cutting underneath. Nice little trade blow right there. I'm not sure if you guys saw that. Oh my god, I did got his bow out for a second. These archers, the Dunedain bow, have definitely helped us out on this other side. Killing a few over friendly dwarfs, which isn't maybe as good, but that'll do. The Axemen making their way up. They're going to be the main focus, though, for the Archer Fire. But here they come. We need to get through this river crossing right now. When it looks like we're doing exactly that. We've broken the river crossing. Oh, more men have been pushed up as well. But that's fine. Once we made our way up here, it should be okay. We need to try and surround it, because I think surrounding it is more important than anything else. And we need to try and push through more men whenever we can. You know, try and get rid of this uh, breach point. So once we can get our soldiers out here, we'll be much better off. Are you guys, you guys shoot up here? It seems like you're really struggling right now. There we go. I don't know why you guys have spent so long to do it, because you're killing them pretty quickly now. Nice. More men being pushed up. Yeah, we just need to try and make sure we, we open up the battlefield as much as we can so that we can we can funnel through our greater numbers. More soldiers being advanced in as well. This is smart by Harad. They don't want to give up the river crossing lightly, but they don't want to commit their entire army here. Oh, look at that as well. They formed up a defensive test judo. It's a smart move right there. But we do have more Gondorians being uh, advanced into the fight as well. And again, I still have that little river crossing force. And I have all my pikemen as well. But I kind of want to avoid bringing them up if I can until we do go through a final crossing. Okay, my spearmen are up now as well. Okay, this is as far as we can go up. Um, I don't know what to shoot, really. Let's try and use our crossbowmen a bit more aggressively. 
and break through this armor. Because if we can, if we can smash that like that left flank, that's gonna be great. I mean, just look at the bodies as well, piled up already. Brutal. And we can probably push up our pikemen just a little bit so that our forces are easier to commit. We're trying to break through this with our with our archer fire. The axemen should be doing a great job along with the Gondorian swords. Axemen are obviously great armor piercing units so when these guys are in defensive test judo it should be the axemen who are ready to take them out. Tell them crossbowmen to stop shooting. What the hell is this? Some cat? Oh no, it's my pikemen, sorry. It'd be really cool if the vault wardens had just a shield on their back as well. I think that would look really cool. Come on, boys, get your pikes out. There we go. There we go, the Vault Wardens looking so awesome. But I think it'd be really dope if they did have a shield just on their back for cosmetic looks. I think that'd be a really nice addition to that unit. Oh, nice. Holy crap, we have broken them here. They commit more and more men. Nice. I should probably actually be trying a bit more then. Let's get all our, let's get our crossbows up here then. Crossbows and our Vault Wardens can also push up because they'll be a great, nice addition to the, the force here. Let's push our entire army across. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start creeping up this army. We do have some cavalry as well, obviously, to match their horsemen. As you can see, they have committed a lot of their army already. Bands of power is looking very even. Both sides having very similar numbers. It does look like a lot of their archers have now pushed up. But I'm going to be probably the number one target for all of their archers. Let's get a rear charge right there. Oh, they're pushing up their cavalry as well. I think we want to try and shoot their cavalry with our crossbows. And obviously try and surround these guys. Dwarf the human. With the help of the Gondorian swords. Let's hope that we can cut these guys down. These slings will not stand a chance. So as I said, this mod, which we're currently playing with, the sub mod, is going to be updated very, very soon. So expect um, expect more content from it. And obviously, the more units they add, the better it's going to be, the cooler it's going to be. And it really just helps out flesh out the units. So I do re definitely recommend you checking that out. Oh god, yeah, our archers are actually being killed right there. Let's probably turn around. I want to go and set up my Vault Wardens like, as best as I can. Are you guys all in pike formation? Not quite. You guys formed your pike phalanx, great. Vault Wardens, do your job, boys. Nice, look at that, we just smashed the Axemen down. That is perfect. So obviously the pikes are going to be very brutal from the front lines. And the Vault Wardens themselves, her hardy dwarfs fighting on. As long as they don't get outflanked, these pikes should just slaughter them. Making sure we are in a decent formation, though. The Gondorians coming out overhead. We can keep them at bay very nicely. Our general is currently fighting their cab, but the Swan Knights have turned up. That's perfect. The Gondorian Swan Knights. And they're going to do a nice little hammer right here into the backside. At least I assume so. Or maybe they're going after the archers. I mean, that's not a bad idea either. Killing the archers would also be a great idea if they do try and flee for them live, their lives. Look at the archers run. Oh, I'm sorry, you poor, poor archers. The Swan Knights will have their vengeance. Pretty anti-climatic -cl charge. That's one of the things Warhammer is really good at. Warhammer does have beautiful charges and obviously very exaggerated. But, you know, that cavalry charge right there should have sent people flying, you know. I don't necessarily want Penlor Fields with the, the Rohirrim, but I want some, you know, charge impact after all. Sending people to the ground, etc. I think would be very cool. But our pikemen absolutely ruined them. We have our merchant guard as well, which is available to the forces of... Erebor, obviously, the men of Dale coming to their guard. And I believe as Dale as well, you can actually, with this sub-mod, get some dwarfs as well. So it's kind of that nice little comparison. In the War of the Ring, the untold story of the war in the north, you have some really, really cool engagements. Where you do have, you know, the, the heroes fighting to the bitter end outside the gates of Erebor, which is so awesome. Dane giving his life, fighting with bards grandson i think at that point oh god it's like running into a brick wall look at that a dwarven pike wall very very fierce but i mean there is a cap on this unit you can only have three of them so that's obviously going to be why we send them back they do still have a lot of archers though you guys need to get over here have they seen me 
Looks like they've seen me, right? Yeah, they have seen me. Yeah, all their cavalry is around here as well. So you dwarves just like sit here. They don't have a lot of missiles on this side, so that's fine. We'll kind of try and hide our cavalry as best we can. And again, we'll just march over here. We still need to wait a little bit more time before we do make our final push. My vault wardens get the hell back and avoid this missile fire, please. Everything else, we're kind of a little bit low on ammunition. We need the Dunedain to get up here. Where are they? Oh, there they are. The Dunedain archers go take out their archers and we should be fine. So we'll bring back our vault wardens who did admirably so far. And then as long as these Dunedain just come in, along with the Gondorian Imperial archers, we, I feel like we're pretty confident at breaking them. I mean, Bands of Power is still very even right now. Oh god, they push, they're pushing, okay. That's very interesting to know. They're sending out their cavalry. Might not be the best unit for us to try and take care of. Um, okay, guys, just form there. Does this give me any good bonuses? Charge speed, missile block, and reducing my speed. It gives me a good charge bonus. Okay, ideally, I don't want to encourage this fight to, to happen too early because, like, I want this fight to happen once we're pushing across the river. Okay, the archers are now moving up. Okay, so the Gondorian archers, you know, they're affiliate rangers up against what these guys, yeah, the affiliate rangers will be much better trained. Obviously not as heavily armoured, but I think they'll be able to do okay. And then obviously we'll have more Gondorians pushing forward, and once that kind of that assault is, is really done, we should be able to push up our forces as well. Even try to push up my crossbows as well, keeping an eye on this mini-map. We do not want the cavalry to charge us. If the cavalry charges us, we'll break very, very quickly. Ideally, we just want these crossbows to help out in this fight. Precision shot right there. God, the crossbow shoots so quickly. That is insane. That may take a little bit longer now. I imagine the fatigue rate does help, but it's 50% missile penetration, which is just unreal. Oh, I love how the way as well Eagle has formed up his defense right here. We should definitely help up here, but we need the archers to be killed so I can push up my Vault Wardens. Until the archers are dead, I can't really do much with my Vault Wardens. Our hidden units have been Our cavalry's been discovered as well. That's not good. We need these archers dealt with so my, 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 my pikemen can make their way up. Let's just try and commit like two of the units up here as well. Because if they can move through the enemy fire, then that's going to be great. Crossbow fight though. I think we're much more heavily armored than the archers. Like obviously the archers have the range, but I think we take a lot less damage from missile fire, whereas they take a lot more. And we penetrate our armor much, much easier than they penetrate ours. Our cavalry, you can just literally see our cavalry there in the winds just waiting. Just literally just show off. Like, I don't know why they take so long to shoot. Surely, you know, they should have a little bit more rate of a fire. But I guess it's kind of like the, the trade-off they have. Okay, I think I need to go now. Try and draw off his cavalry right there. Let's throw in our, our soldiers there. Push up our infantry. My cavalry can probably break from right. Yeah. We'll go into wedge as well. I know they have men in here. I just saw the unit, so... We'll try and break upon them like water to rock. Oh god, where the hell did that unit come from? That dragon of cavalry literally came out of nowhere. Okay, you guys come round now and just charge into them. We'll get, we'll get with you as we do come in with the charge. But there's a sandy cloud. That's like no damage right there. I literally didn't do anything on the that on the charge whatsoever. And now their cavalry is going to turn up as well. Infantry's about to fight, but as always, I'm always pretty happy to take this engagement with the dwarf. The dwarf infantry is just unmatched. I guess as well, this crossbows. Yeah, crossbows continue to shoot there. Obviously, Eagle's going to be using his brave cavalry to, to come around my flank. Oh, God, no. You guys aren't in pike formation, are you? That's awful. I was too busy elsewhere. Are you in pike formation? I don't know. I'm trying to bring you back though, so I can put you in pike formation. There we go. Pikes down there. You guys need to come back still. Once the pikes are down, it's fine, because then we just we just advance forward, and only really arrow fire can beat us back. Oh no! The king of Gondor is dead. 
Oh, but I guess we've got Dorian captain. Let's push up everyone now. Uh, we're just going to go in for one last epic charge. Our cavalry is brilliant broken. I think the Eastlings have this battle, you know, right now. The defense is just too great. We'll switch over some crossbows. I mean, our infantry are smashing them on this left side. Keep it up. Nice. Yeah, we're breaking them. Their Axemen, though, did a very admirable job. We're definitely putting up a good fight, but I think the enemy cavalry is far too strong at this point. The Swan Knights couldn't use their power to their advantage. And we'll go in for one last charge. And their archers as well, I think, racked up so many kills. We'll try and take down as much of his cavalry as possible. The crossbows, oh, they're not going to be faring well, are they? What weapon do they have? Just a normal sword? It'd be great if you had some, like, sword axes as well. Because obviously the dwarfs used a lot more axes and hammers when they did swords. It'd be so hard for this cavalry as well to kill the dwarven units. But they'd have to lean so far down to try and get them. Whereas the dwarf could just take out the horse fairly easily. But I guess the, the main way to deal with the dwarven battle lines is just to break them with that initial charge. But the dwarves are pretty sturdy foes, you know. They're not going to give up lightly. Our general is up here as well. He's making that last stand. We'll put our brace on as well. Probably should put that on as we charged in. Such a great looking map though. I love the way that he's designed the trees. Just, it just is a really nice like, there's not too many trees and they're not too encumbered as well when you zoom all the way in. Like, when you zoom all the way in, they're not so close together that it's just trees everywhere. Like it's just a really nice kind of pattern. And there's a lot of work gone into it. So hats off to Empty for creating this one. Yeah, the rest of their cavalry charges are coming in. Nice little camera and anvil right here. by the uh, Dragon's Wrath Cavalry. Rest of my infantry done there. Well, there's a few horses left. Horses come back quickly. Every little helps. But it does look like, yeah, it does look like that the forces of uh, the Eastlings have defended the River Horizon. We will simply watch my last stand of my Dwarven General fight hard and brave. But he is going to be surrounded very soon. Maybe we can try and nullify this somewhat by committing the spearmen elsewhere. Setting in these guys there. At least that way we might protect our flanks a little bit. And we do obviously still have these Gondorian archers. But they're just not going to do anything. This cavalry as well. I don't think he even knows that I've got my cavalry here. In you go, brave merchant guard. Again, such a disappointing charge, honestly. And now they're just going to be surrounded and killed. Uh, you tried your best, I guess, Cavalry. We managed to kill... We managed to kill like 3,000 of them. So we killed as many as we lost, but... Oh, this defense just is not beneficial. I'm really looking forward to, though, when they add in Mordor to this. Because I think Mordor is going to be such a big faction. Having, like, orcs in the field is just going to change things up so much. And I can't wait. They already have cave trolls. Not in the mod, but they're working on kind of crashes and stuff surrounding them. But I think just having orcs in the field of battle, you know, or pikemen, orc swordsmen, different types of, you know, uruk and stuff, will just be so great. And that will really add to the mod, having that many factions. Because already, just using this sub mod, I feel much more enjoyment playing with all of these other factions, like the Easterlings, like the Dwarfs, who just have an extra couple units. And if they can just add in, you know, maybe some shield and sword infantry for the Dwarfs, some shield and axe infantry, and maybe a couple different armor variants, that would be amazing. Like, I really want the, the shields we saw in the Hobbit film uh, for that. I think that would be great because they look really awesome. Uh, not to say that these, you know, shields available aren't, aren't great. So if we look at the kills, we can see my Dwarven infantry kind of doing what they do best. Lots of kills on them. Uh, we take a look over at uh, White Wolves. We can also see that his archers, 100, almost 200 kills. And his axe infantry right there, 333. Very nice indeed. Then finally taking a look over onto the Eastling side, led by Antique Eagle. We can see that his infantry doing a pretty standard job. 250 kills there and also 143 on the uh, axe infantry. Uh, the Spear Guard kind of just slowing me down more than anything else. And allowing all of these archers to rack up the kills. And obviously the cavalry finally, 138 kills.
So hopefully you guys enjoyed this battle. I kind of felt like just showing off this sub mod. I'm probably going to make a proper video about the sub mod once the uh, update comes and he adds in, I think, four or five more units. And then we'll just run through everything that the sub mod has to offer. But de I definitely recommend you downloading and playing with this sub mod just so you can kind of mess around with a few more factions. And it's just so great seeing the Rise of Mordor finally starting to really come together. Lots of people working hard, submitting their own assets to the mod for the mod team, working on maps, working on architecture because one of the things that they're trying to do with Rise of Mordor is change the default look of all the Attila provinces so that you know it won't feel like you're fighting in a default Attila city or feel like you're fighting in a Gondorian outpost somewhere which I think is the way to go about it now obviously that stuff takes a long long time but I can't wait for it to be done and we can actually fight in some you know Gondorian cities across the Attila map it would be amazing so make sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed it and you want to see more Rise of Mordor on the channel subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you guys in the next one